everyone. Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Women in Tech, International Women's Day 2022. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. I have two guests from AWS here with me. Carolina Pena joins us, the head of enterprise enablement for LATAM, and Laura Alvarez Modernell is here as well, public sector programs manager at AWS. Ladies, it's great to have you on theCUBE. Nice Thank to you meet for you. having us. Carolina, let's start with you. Talk to me a little bit about your role, what it is that you're doing there. So my role um, in AWS is to actually create mechanisms of massive training to try to, to close the talent gap that we have in the region. And when I mention talent gap, I'm talking about obviously digital and cloud computing skills. So that's, that's in, in a nutshell what my role entails. Got it, how long have you been in that role? Just curious. So I've been at AWS a little bit over over two years. Um, I was actually in the public sector team um, when I when I joined, uh, leading the education vertical for Latin America and Canada. And I I recently joined the commercial sector, now leading these massive training efforts for for the region for LATAM. And Laura, you're in public sector. Talk to me a little bit about your role. Yes, I'm in public sector. I'm also based in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, so I am from Latin America, uh, and I lead educational and community impact programs in the southern cone of Latin America. I also lead diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. I'm part of the Women at Amazon Global Board. That's our affinity group to make sure we make efforts towards building a more equal world. Uh, and on a personal note, I'm really passionate about the topic of gender equality because I truly think it affects us all. Uh, as women and as Latins. So that's something that I'm always interested in collaborating with. Excellent. Carolina, back to you. If we think about from an enablement perspective, how is AWS partnering with its customers and its partners to train and employ women particularly in technology? Oh, sure, uh, Lisa. So it's, it's not a surprise. We, like I mentioned, you know, we have a big cloud skills talent gap in the region. In fact, um, you know, 60, 69% of companies have reported talent shortages and difficulty hiring. So, and this represents a 15 year high. So many of these companies are actually, you know, our own commercial customers. So they approach us saying, you know, asking for, for support training and developing, developing their talent. So um, like I mentioned in my role, I create massive training uh, efforts and initiatives. So we always take into consideration women, minorities, underrepresented community. And not just for the, the current talent, meaning like the people that are currently employed, but also to ensure that we're proactively implementing initiatives to develop a talent of younger, you know, a younger generation and a talent uh, so we can, you know, to inspire them and, and ensure that they that we, they were, we're seeing them represented in, in companies like AWS, you know, in our customers and, and in our partners. And uh, obviously we, when we sit down with customers to, to, to craft these massive trainings, uh, you know, leveraging um, their, 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 their ecosystems and communities, uh, we actually try to use all our AWS training and certification portfolio, uh, which includes, you know, in, live, in class with uh, live instructors, uh, in classroom trainings. We also have our AWS skill builder platform which is the platform that allows us to, you know, to reach a, a broader audience because it has, um, you know, over 500 uh, free and on-demand classes. And uh, we also have a lot of different other programs that touch us in different audiences. You know, we have AWS Restart um, for underrepresented and, and underemployed uh, minorities. We also have AWS Academy, which is the program that we have for, for higher education institutions. And we have AWS uh, you know, Educate, which also touches and you know, cloud beginners. So in every single of these programs, we, we ensure that we are encompassing and, 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 and really speaking to women and developing um, training and, and, and developing women. That's a great focus there. Laura, talk to me about upskilling. I know AWS is very much about promoting from within. What are some of the things that it's doing to help women in Latin America develop those tech skills and upskill from where maybe where they are now? Well, Lisa, I think that is super interesting because there's definitely a skills gap problem, right? We have all heard about, and what's funny is also that we have this huge opportunity in Latin America to train people and to help further develop the countries, and we have the companies that need the talent. So why is there still a gap, right? Uh, 
And I think that's because there's no magic solution to solving this problem. No, like, epic Hollywood movie scene that it's going to show how we close the gap. And it takes stepping out of our comfort zone and, as Carolina mentioned, collaborating. So we at AWS have a commitment to help 29 million people globally to grow their technical skills with free cloud computing skills training by 2025. I know that sounds a lot. Uh, through our educational programs, but we do have, as Karina mentioned, a skill builder. You can go into the website for free, enter, choose your path, get trained. We have academy that we implement with universities. Restart, that is a program that's already available in Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, Peru, and Costa Rica. So there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, but you also mentioned something else that I would like to dive a bit deeper, that is Latin American women. And yesterday we had the opportunity to record a panel about intersectionality with three amazing uh, Latin women. And what we have to learn from that is that these are two minorities that intersect, right? We're talking about females that are minority, Latinas are a minority, and in tech that is also something that is even bigger minority. So there are more difficulties there, and we need to make sure that we're meeting that talent that is there, that is in Latin America, that exists. We know for sure we have unicorns in Latin America that are even AWS customers like Mercado Libre, and we have to meet them with the opportunities. And that's why we created a program that came from identifying how this, pro this problem evolves in Latin America, that there is a lack of confidence in women also that they don't feel prepare or equip. There's a cultural component why we don't choose tech careers. And we partner with universities, more than 12 universities in Latin America, with the International American Development Bank as well, to create tech skills. That's a free five weeks program in order to get students and get female in Latin America into the tech world. And we also have them with mentorship. So I think that is an opportunity to truly collaborate because we as AWS are not going to solve this by ourselves, right? We need everyone pitching on that. Right, it's absolutely a team effort. You mentioned something important in terms of helping women and especially minorities get out of their comfort zone. Carolina, I'm curious, when you're talking with women and getting them into, this, into the program and, and sharing with them all of the enablement programs that you have, how do you help them be confident to get out of that comfort zone. That's a hard thing to do. Yeah, no, for sure, uh, for sure, Lisa. Well, I, you know, a lot of times I actually I use myself as an example uh, because you know I studied engineering and industrial and systems engineering many years ago, and uh, you know I, a lot of my career has been in, in higher education and innovation and and startups. And um, as I mentioned in the intro. I've been at AWS for a little bit over two years, so I my career has not been in cloud, and I recently joined the cloud. So I actually had to tr to to go through our own trainings and get our own certifications. So I that's you know a lot of times I actually I use my own example, uh, so people understand that you don't have to come from tech, you don't have to come, you can actually be a non-tech person and and also see the the benefits of the cloud, and you don't have to only you know learn cloud if you're in it in the IT department or in an IT team. So sometimes I, I also emphasize that the, the, the cloud and the, the future is absolutely the cloud. In fact, uh, the World Economic Forum, uh, you know, teaches us that uh, cloud computing is the, the technology that's going to be mostly um, adopted by 2025. So that's why we need to ensure that every single person, uh, women and, and, and others, uh, are, are really knowledgeable in the cloud. So that's why, you know, technical and non-technical, but I, 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 you know, I use myself as an example for them to say, you know, you can actually do it. And uh, obviously also I collaborate with Laura in a lot of the, the uh, women at Amazon Latin America group to also, you know, ensure that we're doing webinars and panels. So we show them ourselves as role model. Like Laura is an incredible role model for our community. And uh, so it's also to, to show examples of, of yeah. what the, the possibilities are. And that's what we do. I love that and you're Can sharing. I make oh, a note there also? Please, yes. Um, to add to that, I think it also requires the companies and the, and, and the private sector to get out of their comfort zone, right? Because we're not going to find solutions doing what we're already doing. We truly need to go and, and, and get near these persons with a new message. Uh, their interest is there in these programs. We have reached more than 3,000 women already in Latin America with tech skills. So it's not that women are not interested. It's 
like how do we reach them with a message that resounds with them, right? Like how we can explain the power of technology to transform the world and to actually improve their communities. I think there's something there also that we need to think further of. It's so important, you know, we say often when we're talking about women in tech that she, she needs to see what she can be or if she can't see it, she can't be it. So having those role models and those mentors and sponsors is absolutely critical for women to, to get, I, I call it getting comfortably uncomfortable out of that comfort zone and recognizing there's so many opportunities. Carolina, to your point, you know, these days, every company is a tech company, a data company, whether you're talking about a car dealer, a grocery yeah. market. So your point about, you know, and, and obviously the future being cloud, there's so much opportunity that that opens up for everybody, really. But that's an important totally. thing for people to, to recognize how they can be a part of that, get out of their mm -hmm. comfort zone, and try something that they may, maybe th hadn't considered before. Yes, and, and actually, Lisa, I would love to, to share an example. So we have uh, Grupo Boticario, which is one of our customers, uh, one of the, the leading uh, retails in Brazil. And they've been a customer of AWS since 2013. When they realized that, you know, the urgency and the importance of embracing state-of-the-art technology, uh, to your point, like, you know, this is a retail company that, that understands that needs to be uh, you know, embrace digital transformation, especially because, you know, they get very busy during Mother's Days and other holidays during the during the year. So they realized that they, instead of outsourcing their IT requirements to technology experts, they decide to actually start developing and bringing the talent, you know, within itself, within, you know, technology in-house. In so they decided to start training within. And that's when we obviously, we partner with them uh, to also create a very comprehensive uh, training and certification plan that started with you know a lot of the infrastructure and security teams, but then it was actually then implemented in the rest of the company. So going back to the point, like everybody really needs to know. And uh, what we also love about Boticario is they they really care about the, the, the diversity and inclusion aspect of this equation. And we actually collaborated with them as well through this program called Disinvolvi. Uh, with the Brazilian government and this involving means uh, develop in Portuguese and they, this program really ensures that we are also closing that 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 gender and that that race gap and ensuring that that they're actually you know developing talent in in cloud uh, for Brazil so we you know obviously have been very successful with them and uh, we will continue to do even more more things with them uh, particular for this for this topic. I've always known how customer focused AWS is every time we get to go to reInvent or some of the events, but it's so nice to hear these, the educational programs that you're doing with customers to help them uh, in, improve DEI, to help them enable their own women in their organizations to learn skills. I didn't realize that. I think that's, that's fantastic. Very much a symbiotic part of AWS. If we think about the theme for this year's International Women's Day, breaking the bias. I want to get you, both of your opinions, and Laura, we'll start with you. What that means to you, and where do you think we are in Latin America with breaking the bias? Well, I think breaking the bias is the first step to truly being who we are every day and, and being able to bring that to our work as well. I think we are in a learning curve of that. The companies are changing culturally. As Carolina mentioned, we have customers that are aware of the importance of having women. And as we say at AWS, not only because there is a good business reason, because there is, because there are studies that show that we can increase the country's GDP, but also because it's important and it's the right thing to do. Uh, so in terms of breaking the bias, I think we are learning and we have a long way to go. Uh, I talked a bit earlier about intersectionality. And that is something that is also important to, to highlight, right? Because we are talking about females, but we are also talking about another minorities. We are talking about uh, underrepresented communities, indigenous people, uh, Latins. So when these overlap, we face even bigger challenges to get where we want to get, right? And to get to decision-making places, because technology is transforming the ways we take decisions, we live, and we need someone like us taking those decisions. So I think it's important at first to be aware 
and to see that you can get there and eventually to start the conversation going and to build the conversation, not to just lead it, but to make sure we hear people and their input and what they're going through. Yes, we definitely need to hear them. Carolina, what's your take on breaking the bias and where do you, from your experience, where do you think we are with yeah. it? Yeah, no, I'm as passionate as Laura on this topic and that's why we, you know, we're collaborating in the, the women at, at Amazon Latin America chapter because we're both very, uh, I think breaking the bias starts with uh, with us and ourselves, and uh, we're very proactive uh, within within AWS and 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 externally. And I feel it's also, I mean, Lisa, uh, what we've been doing is not only obviously gathering, you know, the the, the troops and really in really making sure that that we have very very aggressive goals internally, but also bringing you know, bringing uh, our male counterparts and other, you know, other members of the other communities uh, because the change, we're not going to make it alone. Like right. the change where it's not women only talking to women is going to make the change. We actually need to make sure that male and other groups are represented in the dialogue, that, they're, that we're very conscious about that. And uh, I feel like we're seeing more and more that the topic is becoming more of a priority, not only within AWS and Amazon, but we also see it because now that I meet with, when I meet with customers um, around the, the region, they really want to see how we can collaborate in this diversity and inclusion initiative. So I think we are breaking the bias because now this topic is more top of mind and then we're being more proactively um, addressing it and, and training people and educating people. And I, and I feel we're, we're really in in a in a pivoted point where where the change that we're really been wanting to uh, we will see in the next you know few years, which is very exciting. Excellent, and we'll see that with the help of women like you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today, talking about what you're doing, how you're helping organizations across uh, AWS's ecosystem, customers, partners and helping, of course, folks from within you, right? It's a holistic effort, but we are on our way to breaking that bias. And again, I thank you both for your insights. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for the opportunity. My pleasure. For Carolina Pena and Laura alvarez Modernell. I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of Women in Tech, International Women's Day 2022.